Hello, everybody. Andrea here. I'm going to jump right into it. Let's talk about things about your program that nobody talks about. This is from somebody who went to school and suffered through it. And you hear all kinds of things about, oh, you're not going to have a life. It's super expensive. Don't bother. You're not going to get sleep. Or you might hear things like, oh, school's easy. You just have to study the night before the exam and you'll be fine. Let me talk about things that people don't talk about that would be really helpful for you to know ahead of time. Or if you're currently struggling with this, how to help with that. Okay. So let's talk about it. Number one is in the program, you're going to have teachers, instructors that do not like you. I find this could be the case with any program, but those teachers, those instructors are going to be marking you. They're going to pass you. They're going to be making the test. They're going to be making exams. So you have to act nice and you have to do whatever you can so they don't hate you. I was that student. I do not know why. Well, no, maybe I do. I kind of, I don't know. I, 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 okay. I was that student who would always be asking questions. I would be not challenging the instructor, but they would say one thing and I would be like, well, page 300 in the textbook, it says this, but you just said that. What do we have to know? And they'd be like, Andrea, come on, seriously. So maybe that's why they didn't like me very much. I have no idea. But <laughs> I found instructors did not like me and they would be very hard on me, especially when it came to clinicals, when you're seeing patients, they would magically find calculus on every tooth. And I would go back thinking I left calculus on every tooth and I couldn't find the calculus. So I would pretend to be scaling it off. They would come back and there was magically no calculus there now but I didn't touch anything. So if that doesn't tell you that they had it in for me, I don't know what does. Not every instructor, but this is what you're not told is some instructors won't, won't like you. Some instructors will love you. You just have to deal with it. Okay. So that's the best thing to do. How did I deal with it? I just, I just acted nice. I just played nice. I did whatever I could. I, you just have to deal with it. Okay, you guys comment below if you are dealing with a difficult instructor, it can make your life hell in school. And that's why my life was hell and I couldn't wait to get out, but there's only so much they can do too, right? They're the ones making the test, making the exams, yes. But if you study hard, buckle down, you can do it. It just means you're gonna work harder than anybody else, okay? Let's talk about studying. What's the best way to study? Some students will tell you, oh, I just studied a day before this exam and I got 90%. They're lying to you or they're just really smart. I don't know about you, but I'm not that really smart person. I have to study hard to know anything. If I'm even now, if I'm learning something new, I can't just watch a video and retain it. I have to practice, I have to study, I have to research. I've been a restorative dental hygienist for about six years now. And even then I was not the best student in class. It took me longer to learn how to do an amalgam filling. It took me longer how to do a composite filling and I was older. So I'm just not that person who learns things right away. Hopefully you are, but if you're not, just because somebody else can study the day before a test and get a 99%, doesn't mean you can. You have to study what works for you. I typically had to study two weeks before a test if we had that information. Sometimes we don't know we're gonna have a test two weeks ahead of time, but I always had to study ahead of time. So don't listen to what other people say. You're going to have to learn for yourself. And this brings me to the next point of some people swear by, oh, I just highlight the textbook and that's how I study, or I just handwrite all of my notes. That helps me study. So another thing that people don't tell you is their study habits might not be your study habits. You have to figure out what works best for you. My study habits might not work for anybody else. So if I'm telling you how I study, that might not help you. As an example, how I study is I have to read through notes constantly. Sorry, not notes, but like the textbook, notes from school. That's how I learn. The more I read it over and over. That's how I retain it. If I sit there and try to write things out, highlight, I'm learning nothing. I'm just wasting my time. You don't want to waste time. So you have to find out what studying like habits work best for you, but you're not going to find that out right away. You're likely going to 
um, study one way and then get a really bad mark on the test. And then, you know, okay, that's not the way I study. And then you're going to try another way. Like maybe I'm just going to highlight the textbook next time and then go, oh my God, I got an 85%. Oh my God, that was amazing. So you will learn your study habits that way. Another thing that people don't, don't talk about or do talk about is that they think you're not going to have a life in your program. Once you're in either like dental hygiene, dental assisting, you're not going to have a life. But then some people do the opposite and say, well, yeah, okay, you're in school from nine to five, but you can still hang out and do things afterwards. You can't study all the time. You can't be in school all the time. So hang out with me. You know, friends, family won't understand. So what I wish I had known is kind of in two parts. You can have a life, of course, but this is really dependent on you. If you're a lucky, smart student who can study the day before and get a 99%, okay, you're going to have more of a life than another student like me who had to study two weeks before an exam to get 90%, which is still pretty good, but I couldn't just pull it off the night before. But another thing you must think about is you still need a break. So I would have still needed a break. It's not helping you to study all night, every night and never have a break. You need a day off. So that's you having a life. Take a day off, hang out with friends, family, go shopping, whatever. But that 99% student who can only study the night before and get 99%, they might take off every night or like every other night, lucky them. So just because somebody else takes all the time off and has a life doesn't mean you can, but vice versa. If that student is like studying all night, every night, it doesn't mean that you have to. You just have to find what works for you. Another thing is, should you work while you're in your program? You know what? Some people don't have a choice. I was watching a YouTube video that like came up in my YouTube feed, whatever you want to call it. I was doing other things, so I didn't have a chance to skip the video. But this student was basically saying, which I don't agree with, I kind of want to comment on her video and let her know she sounded kind of stupid. Can I say stupid? No, that's not very nice of me. But what she was saying was, you know, honey, and that's what she was saying. Okay. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to mimic what she was doing, but I probably won't do a very good job. She was like, honey, when you're in school, that is your full-time job. Talk to your spouse, tell them they're going to be doing the cooking, cleaning, and making money. They're going to be putting the kids to bed. They're going to be doing the laundry because you don't have time for that shit. You, am I allowed to say that over YouTube? I don't know. You don't have time for that. Your full-time job is hygiene school, which sounds great in theory, but you know what? That's not always an option. You might have kids. You might have a, a part-time job, not a full-time job because you're in school, a part-time job. You, you might not have mommy and daddy paying for your education. You might not have your husband or your wife paying for your education. So I had to work when I was in dental hygiene school and dental assisting school and in restorative school every single time. I had to work part time. That made it harder for me, of course, because I was in school. I would study on the way to work. I would work a shift, come home or sorry, be on the bus, study, come home at 11 p.m. and go to bed. So you have to plan around studying that way. If you do not need a job, please do not work while you're in school. It will be so much easier for you, less stressful. You will get better marks if you don't have a job because you have more time to study. There's only 24 hours in a day or you have 24 hours in a day. It depends on how you look at it. But if you don't have to get a job, do not. I didn't have a choice. I had to, so I did. So those I would say are the key things that nobody talks about and people should be talking about, but very real struggles and things you have to think about when you're in your program. So comment below, you guys. I would love to hear what your struggles are or were if you have now graduated and watching this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and let me know if you need help with anything, okay? I am a tutor, so I tutor for the board exam. I am here to help you and to make school less stressful and hopefully studying more fun. Definitely check out this YouTube channel. Click like to the video, but I do upload new videos every Mondays and Thursdays minimum, sometimes on the weekends as well. So please keep checking back. My name is Andrea. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.